I wanted to do a little bit of a showcase on a project I'm working on using the Basalt user interface, which you can make with it, and the ME bridge from Advanced Peripherals for interfacing with an applied Energistics 2 system. I'll try to split the video into three parts. First, kind of showcasing the actual program, and then later the configuration required for AE2 kind of unique because there's a really strange quirk which I'll discuss with the interface when it comes to reading crafting patterns and then lastly a brief look at the code which is a mess so if I run my program AE2 bridge what happens is is it does a scan for this interface from advanced peripherals and it finds the patterns You'll see I've got four patterns. If I was to get rid of one and run the program again, it only finds three. There's a lot of bugs with the program. So it's very much a work in progress. I can rescan it and then it finds the newly added pattern. This is the amount of items in my system. And this is my set point. What I can actually do is say, you know what, I want to have two chests. I want to have four sticks, eight planks, six slabs. Right now, my feedback is I've updated in the debug screen. This is supposed to be a progress bar. It's set to it's set statically to 10%. When I do click rescan, the goal is, is it would fail as many, many patterns loaded. You can also, of course, scroll, as you can see here on the demo screen. A lot of cool stuff you can do with Basalt. Now, the reason it's saying there's one of these, and the set point is this, because we go here, notice how there's none. But if I was to bypass this system and turn on my subnet, we actually have one. Again, I'll be discussing this configuration later. But the reason is to do with the ME bridge. This function here, list craftable items, returns a table, returns all craftable items. Catch is it only actually does it if there's at least one. It doesn't return that if there's none. So what happens is when I do a poll, when I do a scan to see what do I have, items it quickly turns the system on gets a read and then turns it off so the long-term goal would be this system every period of time it would go through and it would say hey you're asking for two but you only got one would automatically you know tell this to refill to restock but right now i just have a test button what's going to happen is it's going to go through all the items in the list and check them all and I've not implemented a rescan at the end of that. Just forgot to. But if I rescan it, that's now what's in stock. What I really should do is subtract one of these values because it's counting the system as a whole, even the items that are normally inaccessible. So there's an off by one error. But that's fine for the time being. And then ignore this debug stuff. That's just troubleshooting. Test craft again. Eventually, what's going to happen? I rescan this again. It's going to find we got two, nine, this oak planks and slabs. We'll make a few more. I'm not exactly sure why it made more sticks. Just another fun bug, I guess. The rest of them seem to work okay. And if we call test, Nothing more will happen. If I was to delete all the planks, which I just did, and bypass this system, take out this planks, so there was absolutely none in the system. I could turn this off because it's there. We do a rescan. 
here's a bug it actually drew this it didn't delete this old news but it refilled planks with slab because it doesn't know about planks the screen redrawing issue i haven't fixed yet yeah see right here can't see the planks pattern even though it's there because it needs at least a minimum one which is kind of an annoying quirk that overcomplicates this a lot by having this whole subnet in case I didn't include this already, we try to make a chest. It makes it no problem manually. If the subnet's off. If it's on, this is what happens. It has that one plank there that's usually inaccessible because the redstone's off. But if that network's always on, I can't take it because of the way I have the storage bus set. And if I try to make a chest now, it's going to say, hey, you've got a plank, which I really don't because of the storage bus configuration. And it's going to say it can't do it. And the reason for that is this storage bus here is set to insert only. Normally, by default, it's bidirectional. Extract only, but I want insert only. Normally, this is off. It does not report items that are inaccessible. But we want to see them. So we can't take them out. We gotta have one 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 here for each type of pattern we're trying to make. Turn this off. And if you're not familiar with subnets, basically the storage bus accesses external inventories. This interface acts like a chest, so it exposes the entire other network to the storage bus on the main net. You have to divide them. Typically, energy and data go through AE2. This quartz fiber only allows energy through. This handles data in the appropriate way, so these are essentially split network. And the toggle bus is there to just turn it off and on as needed. The whole reason for the subnet is because of a quirk with the list craftable items function. It returns all craftable items if there's at least one. I guess the last thing I could do is a quick run through of this poor, poor code. Because I don't know if I'm actually going to finish this project. I've kind of reached the point that I can't go any further. But anyways, Basalt, here's the mods that I use, blah, blah, blah. And Basalt's kind of a cool library. If it doesn't have it, download it. This is the Advanced Peripherals ME Bridge. And here is a bunch of Basalt stuff. And they have really good documentation here. So when you're adding frames, you know, there's all kinds of info. They got a few examples. Very cool. A lot of cool stuff you can do with it. See this fancy button? When I click this, that's a bad example. When I click rescan, see how it goes black and gray? because I'm passing that rescan button to this function and on click it's coloring it on click up it's coloring it and then if you lose focus it changes the color so basically any button you add on the screen you can pass it through this function and it kind of gives it that visual art to let you know clicking on it For whatever reason this one's broken it's not doing that more bugs update config I call this just to update the text file for the set points. It makes it so if I was to turn the system off and turn it back on, the set points don't get erased. But every time it does a new poll of the available patterns, it doesn't save those. You don't want those to be persistent, just the set points. And load interface. 
this is kind of where I struggle with basalt. I don't know the best way to do things. Like right here, these items, Minecraft, chest, stick, blah, blah, blah. They're actually getting drawn here. So this cyan with the names, the amounts, and the set points, it's all happening in here. So we've got a label name, the amount, and the set point. Different thing about the set point though, is when you click on it, you can actually interact with it. And that all happens with um, on key. So if it detects a key press and the keys enter or the numpad enter, it does a quick sanity check to see if it's blank or if it's in zero and 10,000. If it's all good, it sets it and updates the config. I was trying to make it work with the lose focus, but the problem is like, let's say I click on it and it goes blank because of down here on a click, there is it. But if I just go to the next one, I want that to go back to zero or something, but it doesn't on the loose focus does not work the way I think it should um, load the config. This is just mainly the set points. And this is the largest uh, function scan craftable. This is where we turn the redstone on. We wait for a second. We read in the data. The reason we wait is to make sure that the A2 system is actually booted up. I would imagine as you made a larger and larger system that was power hungry and many more patterns, you'd have to wait longer. But an interesting thing about the salt here is that when I do the rescan, here's the rescan button. It actually does the scheduling thing. I don't fully know how it works yet, but it yields. So when we click and call this function, and then it's sleeping for a second, it kind of goes to the other methods, which is my main, and it kind of jumps back and forth. And I think the reason it's doing that is because of this. But again, this is all pretty new to me. And I don't understand it fully. We read it in, and there's a ton of data that comes in from this ME list craftables items from advanced peripherals. We kind of go through it and do a comparison. We look up the name, like Minecraft chest, and if there's a set point already saved, load it. And, if, and then uh, make a new table of just the data we want, which is the name, the amount, the set point with the set point, or if it's not there, just make it a one. Then turn the redstone off. Then save the config. And then down here is my test craft button. This is something I would want running all the time, but I haven't quite figured out that logic and I haven't figured out like, you know, priorities or how to do. It's always going to start at chest, stick, oaks, planks. It'd be cooler to have it smarter but I'm not able to do that that's a pretty basic thing just a test this is pretty much the point I'm giving up on it and the main doesn't really do anything here's some confusion why can this function see parse data it shouldn't shouldn't it be out of scope if I was to run this with no comments parse data it, it, it can actually see that But at the very, very top, I've set parse data to local. So that's something I don't understand with Lua, well, globals and locals and all that stuff. Flipping back to the advanced peripherals. Potentially, you could do some really cool stuff. You could do, you know, get crafting CPUs to see how many are there. You could get um, energy storage to make sure your system is not to run out of power you can check if the items are already crafting and then stop asking for a new craft if one's already in progress and uh, yeah pretty cool